Hello and welcome to the American Photo Treks post-processing video for our horses workshop. And I'm sorry this is getting to you late, but I have had some technical troubles. It seems like every time I start this video, we start to go through the processing. Uh, I, it's crashing. It made me very, very frustrated. I think I'm maybe putting my uh, system here to uh, the uh, maximum uh, cap of its capabilities here. But I think I've got it worked out, so let's try and get through it and see what we can do. But thank you very much for joining us for the uh, workshop on the weekend. Had two very, very different days. One day we had sunrise and snow-capped peaks. Next day we had a snowstorm and horses running through fresh uh, snow. Both days were just fantastic, but also both very, very different. Uh, and uh, that second day was, uh, it was cold, but it wasn't near as bad as everybody said it was going to be, and it was actually a lot of fun, so uh, thank you very much for uh, coming out with us, and hope you got some great shots. I'm going to go through a few little tips and tricks here that I've come up with as I process these images. Hopefully they'll be helpful to you too. If this is your first time joining me for one of these, that's me in there. Hi, how you doing? And every time I click something on my mouse or on the keyboard, you'll see it pop up right here so you can follow along with me. Uh, and of course you can pause it and go back and that's why I like uh, the videos because uh, you can look at it as many times as you want. So let's get started with this. And um, you know the first thing about this uh, processing these is culling. You know, going through the images and finding the images that are cool. And, you know, there's no perfect real way to do this. Um, one of the things that's kind of helpful to me has been uh, just simply deleting the shots that, you know, I'll never use. You know, some of these have just aren't, aren't working for me, and so I'll just kind of, you know, maybe star all those one star and uh, later on I'll group all the one stars and then just uh, delete them you know because these just don't quite work um, some things I like as I'm looking at these images is I kinda like it when all the horses are looking the same direction if one horse is kinda you know off uh, looking in another direction like this one here really close you know you can see all of their faces but the black horse is looking this direction. All the rest are looking this direction. So not quite perfect. Still pretty darn close. I like this one where they're all charging straight at me. That looks kind of cool. Um, I like it when, like, here's, here's where he's really looking off in the wrong direction. Um, here they're coming straight at you. You can see the faces. You know, it's hard to say what's cool, but you know you'll know it when you see it here they're all seeming to face the same general direction they're running towards you as uh, as a viewer so that's pretty cool right there it's amazing to see how different it is within just a fraction of a second you know what uh, comes up here's a great example they're coming up out of that uh, little draw there and just look uh, how cool that is as they uh, come up the come up the draw so, you know, it's hard to say what's cool, but, uh, you know, some, it's kind of easier to say what isn't. And there's a lot of them that just, you know, aren't quite. So, uh, in this one, I kind of I kind of thought this was a cool image right here. And we'll start right there. They're all kind of facing generally the same direction. You can see their faces generally. And uh, they're, they're a lot of action in the shot. So let's, let's start off with some basic... Uh, uh, editing of this image right here. So the way I do it is I, I use um, Bridge as my uh, library and uh, then when I open a raw file in Bridge it takes me into Adobe Camera Raw like this right here and uh, I begin to process it right there. And as you can see right away it's very bright the snow's got like a blue tinge to it, and uh, if you haven't already noticed, the black horse was quite a challenge in uh, processing these images. So let's start off there, and um, 
first thing I do is I'll go ahead and hit the auto, but because we were uh, just more, so it'll give me kind of a basic starting point, but, um, and so because we were dealing with this white snow, you know, a lot of weird things happen when you hit the auto. You get this, you know, blue tinge to the white snow. The black horse is still really black. You're really bright. And for some reason, it instantly cranks up the vibrance and gives a lot of these horses kind of a, a weird color to them. So I, I bring back down the vibrance and, and the saturation, which it also kind of jumped into because it just didn't really work. So I'm going to bring down, start by bringing down the uh, exposure just a little bit. And uh, I'm going to work first with the black. See how it darkened the blacks? And that really isn't very helpful for our black horse. But if I bring up the blacks, then you start to see some detail with them. And now I'm going to take the eyedropper here in white balance. And I'm going to show you how to get a general white for your snow. And some of you may have like blue snow, some of you may have gray snow. Um, you know, snow is a, is a challenge for your uh, a white balance on your cameras. And so there was a lot of challenge right there. So if you just touch right there into a white area of the picture, it does a pretty good job of giving you a base start point of the white balance. And that is a much more realistic white balance. Although it's still, you know, not quite pleasing. I want to move it a little bit one way or another. And then where you, this, where it really starts to work on this image is clarity. There you start getting, start really bringing in and texture. And then a little bit of dehaze. And that, and you got to be careful with it because it'll darken everything up kind of bad. And then bring up the shadows because really this poor program is seeing the horses as shadows and everything else as white. And then the more you bring up that clarity, a little bit of contrast, the more it starts separating out the horses. Maybe now you can add a little bit of vibrance without it looking too unnatural. And that's kind of my starting point as I look as I do these and uh, kind of gives me an idea where to go from here. Um, and I'm not going to open this in Photoshop because that's where I've been crashing in the past. So I'm just going to hit cancel here. And I've already got this image open in Photoshop. So I'm going to show you a couple quick um, fun things that uh, might be helpful to, to process images. I already got this one open in Photoshop. So hopefully it's not going to crash on me. And so right away, you want to start off with getting your exposure right on your horses and again the black horse is just a challenge so one of the things I use it used to be a free program now it costs a little bit of money but it's really worth it and that's the Nick effects plugins they're so powerful they've got so many great features so easy to use and uh, for something like this it and we'll go filter Nick collection and then one I just used the heck out of, it's called Vivesa 2. And let's show you what it does right here. And what it does is it gives you these control points. You grab a control point and you place it on here and it kind of says, okay, now what you want to affect is everything in that color and tone range that you put that co uh, control point on. So it'll affect this primarily and then less or so things out of that color and tone range. So here we've got our black horse giving us all kinds of trouble. And let's just turn up the brightness. And there we are. Now we're starting to see Mr. Black Horse. What was his name? I forgot. But we're starting to see a little bit of detail with him. You don't want to go too much because then it starts looking unnatural. Now you notice it did affect a little bit of the horses in back. So you can bring that, but it still looks natural the way it did. And maybe just by bringing the saturation down a little bit, kind of, then you can even do a little bit more right on his face, separate one there. Come in there, bring up the brightness. 
now you start to see more of the detail in his face and eyes. And that's how these control points work. And very powerful tool here. Uh, now it's sold by, I think, a company called DxO. Costs a little bit, but it's totally worth it. And uh, gives you the, this kind of power. And you can say, OK. And then it creates a layer right there that you can then create a layer mask on if you want or bring up and down the opacity to only create you know so much of the effect however you want to do it but a uh, powerful little tool right there and you can use that to help correct your uh, exposure inadequacies on each individual horse and I'll show you another thing too I'll add another Nick effect layer where you now can use Vivesa again and bring this up one more time and you can zoom in a little bit here and one of the very cool things about these horses is their muscles and their fur and how great they look and now you can take one of these control points put it right here zoom in to like your lead horse here and you can add a structure that really starts bringing out that feature maybe a little brightness and we want to go down just a tad with the saturation so he still looks normal a little contrast and now it's added a bit of pop to that area that you've put that in that uh, circle point in and you can do these circles too you know and you can just duplicate this one if you like the effects that you've done there and then drag it over put it on this other horse you start getting a little bit of that same thing you can see how structure works just add some structure very much like Adobe Camera Raw or uh, Lightroom and just gives you a little bit of extra punch on your horse right there and again you can play with the opacity of it if you don't want it that much you can still make changes to this layer just a very cool very powerful tool to bring out the the horses now another thing with me I just do not like these the fence to me, the fence makes it look like, you know, this is all staged, it's not real, it's, they're in a pen, and I don't know, I just don't like, as far as storytelling goes, I don't like the fence. Um, now, you know, I could go in and just start, you know, trying to use my clone tool or my content aware tool to, you know, start taking out the fence, but it gets so difficult in and around the horses you know you start using this and then it starts affecting the horses and that don't look right so the way I got rid of my fence here zoom back out I'll show you this little trick here is I used my clones my uh, selection tool and I selected my horses and then I uh, use selected mask to get a real detailed mask of the horses, especially around the hair. And I guess I can quickly show that to you. But again, I'm, I'm not real worried about anything about except right here is where uh, around the fence. And again, I'm not going to do it because this is another thing that might cause it to crash. But I created this selection. And now I'm going to deselect that. And I'm going to load my previous selection here, one I called Horses. And what I did was first I created a layer of just the horses, layer via copy. Now, if you look, this is just those horses. Okay? And I'm going to sure that's 100%. Now I'm going to come on this layer. Again, going to load that select, load selection. 
I'm going to go with horses again. Now I'm going to go inverse, select inverse, and I'm going to do layer via copy. And I'm just now going to create a layer of just the snow around here. Now, when I zoom in and start using, let's say, my clone stamp tool, you can use your content aware or whatever works best for you. In this situation, I think a rather heavy clone stamp tool might be the easiest way to go. I can make sure There we go. Now I can go on just this layer, use my clone stamp tool. And start to paint away this fence. And when I get close to the horse, I really don't have to worry about it because I'm just working on this layer. Now I put these layers back. And uh, of course I did go off the rails a little bit, didn't I? So but it's not going to grab anything that it shouldn't grab. So I can work just here on the current layer and get rid of this fence. Still have to try not to touch the horse, but it's not that super difficult situation. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but you can see now and adjust my brush, work around it without worrying about grabbing part of the horse or damaging the horse. When I add that all back together, there they are. So you can see how it took away the fence right there but left the horse intact. So another thing I told you I'd show you is you notice some of these horses, when they're running, sometimes they squint and their eyes, like his eyes, good looking horse right here, right? But because they, he didn't really get a catch light in the eye, he looks kind of dead or stuffed, right? And so there's a lot of easy ways to take care of that. I think we can take care of it with a uh, simple brush tool and I'm just going to select some of the snow here that color right there and then I'm going to grab my brush I'm going to put it at a low opacity about 30 percent low flow to normal is probably fine and then I'm going to make a very very small soft round brush right here and you can kind of see where some of the light is hitting his eye and it's like round. The horse is really round. And I'm going to take this, I'm going to make sure that opacity is way down and so is the flow because it can go off the rails pretty fast. I'm just going to create the tiniest little half moon here on his eye. Great. And then maybe just a little bit on the bottom, too. Right there. And then maybe just one or two little dots right here like that. Now, when you go back, it's amazing what that little dot does. It brings the horse to life. Isn't that cool? It's like before he almost looks stuffed, right? See the catch light in this horse's eye? Just that one little dot makes a big difference. Now here's an example of another thing I'm going to show you real quick. And 
is see how sometimes they squint their eyes and it looks a little unnatural, a little weird? Well, a cool trick for that is I'm going to go filter and I'm going to go into my liquify right here. And I'm going to zoom in on this horse with the squinty eyes. And I'm going to take the bloat tool right here. And I'm going to put that just over his eye and click once. Twice if I'm feeling really plucky and maybe on the other eye too. And you're like, well that looks a little weird, Dave. Maybe even just to kind of demonstrate it. Ooh, that's too much. that one more time. There we go, click, click. I know that looks a little weird right now, but if you make their eyes just a little bit bigger, it really adds a level of pop to your image. Just a tad. Quick click got to be careful with it. Oops, see, like that. Just, just, you know, I don't know, actually, that looks pretty good. I thought it was going to be too much, but you're saying, Dave, that looks a little weird. Well, it might while you're there, but now zoom back. And you can say whether or not that looks weird to you or not. You know, it's it kind of gives them a little bit more life, draws people into it a little bit, a little bit more. So that, that can be kind of your decision there. And then the last thing I'm going to show you is how to add a bit of pop to their faces and um, kind of draw you into the picture a little bit more. And again, I'm going to use that Nick effect. So I'm going to go filter, Nick collection, and this time I'm going to use their Color Effects Pro. And this thing is just, it's a really powerful and it's so easy to use. I, I really, I wish I did get some kind of kickback for this. I don't. Um, but uh, so much fun. Yeah, here's Glamour Glow, which is a fun thing to do to the horses if you want to add that effect. But I'm going to go to something called Darken, Lighten, Center. Okay. And this is a cool kind of way that's not just a vignette. It's also... Uh, a kind of highlight. So it's a highlight and a vignette put together and you can place the center on the place where you want it to have the most impact. So I think right about here. And look at what it does. It kind of really adds a dimension and you can, you know, make it darker, the border darker or lighter, the center brighter or darker, and then adjust the center size too. Then when you say OK, <coughs> it creates it on a layer right there like that. Takes it a second. Every time I do something like this, I'm always scared to death that everything's going to crash because boy. And look at the difference that makes. Boom! What a wonderful little pop there, right? And you don't have to use that much. You, know, you can bring it down. And then you can also, you know, put a mask on this and widen the effect. But it's a great way to add a little pop to your image. And so those are all my little tips and tricks that I wanted to share with you. I hope you find them useful. And um, I thank you very much for coming. Uh, please remember to, uh, uh, at, you know, uh, to give... Uh, uh, at American Photo Tricks when you share one of these pictures because I've seen some of the images already and they look great and I will just come dying to see more and I hope you find this useful and I hope you attend another workshop. Had a lot of fun. Both days were a lot of fun. The people were a lot of fun. The cats and the mule and oh my goodness, it was just a great time. If you're into uh, night photography or want to get into night photography, we've got three night photography workshops in a row. I'll be sending the link uh, out to that for April, May, and June. They're all a lot of fun, and it's a lot more fun to do night photography when you go out with a friend. 
So uh, I hope you uh, found this useful, and I hope to see you again on another American Photo Treks workshop. And it didn't crash. Yay!